Hey, hey y'all, she gets this Erica Vane back again with another Gossip Girl video. And as you can tell from the title, we are breaking down episode four. Let's get into it. Ciao. I might have spoke too soon, honey. If you haven't already, go and check out my episode three breakdown video. I absolutely enjoy doing that. Episode three is by far my favorite episode thus far in the series because episode four has reverted back to what episode one and two were giving us. It is Zoya's birthday, and while it would seemingly be a celebratory occasion, a joyous occasion, it is not because it is in fact the day that both Zoya and Julian lost their mom. Julian and Zoya's mom died in childbirth while delivering Zoya so it is a very hard day for Zoya to handle. She still carries a ton of guilt around it and then Julian has been removed from her sister hasn't really been around her during her birthday so she doesn't really know that this is the kind of point of view that Zoya has about this and how she actually feels. These two literally allow Monet and Luna to wreck them and they are seemingly getting to a better place when we leave episode three coming into episode four julian is professing that she's going clean she's giving up makeup and just going to try to be more transparent she's starting to push back against these norms that they have created of her perfectionism and elitism and all of that and i tell you one thing luna and monet are not going down without a fight and it's so annoying to see like honestly if i don't get any kind of backstory on luna and monet very soon i'm going to go into full-on despise mode these two girls disgust me like literally disgust me they are clinging on for dear life to the idea of fame to the idea of influence to this bullshit ass socioeconomic status that they feel like they need to uphold and their lives are going to be ruined if they're no longer at the top of this classes ass food chain and it is disgusting literally it's disgusting i can't like watching these two little girls frolic around trying to ruin zoya's life and in turn ruining julian's life as well as well as any other little bystanders any little any innocent folks that are in the blast area and enough is enough something needs to happen to these two because they have not learned their lesson yet they have not gotten it together yet they're still trying to fight to put julian's ass on top because they're clinging to this idea of zoya trying to come for julian's spot newsflash there are no spots y'all are in high school this isn't even real life cut it you're stupid and i don't want to come at these teenagers like this but at this point we're four episodes in and you hoes are dumb i said what i said i'm sorry <laughs> no i'm not sorry because monet and luna took it to a whole nother level in this episode they played a video of zoya getting bullied back at her old school and they like tortured this girl to the point that she had a panic attack in a freaking lab at her school and she felt like she had no way out she needed to get out immediately and she sets a fire y'all she sets a fire in the hopes that she would either die or get out either way it didn't matter to her because she just needed out of that room like that's what we're doing that's what we're doing we're sending off nuclear missiles this bad like we're humiliating people this bad they play this video at this party that they throw that's now a conjoined party because they were trying to have a battle of the party it was literally like the most stupid battle back and forth up until the end of this episode and I just can't and it was all spurred by Monet and Luna and it just aggravated me the entire time watching but then watching this video play out and seeing Zoya break down and hurt in this way and I'm like is this what y'all been talking about nobody's gonna look at her the same if it gets out but come to find out Julian had no idea that she was actually being bullied and not the bully of that particular situation so now I'm just like okay I should have been on Zoya's side from the very beginning sis is really sweet even though y'all in this episode she was trying Obi's patience and she was literally giving Julian it was almost like a switch flip which I definitely think that we can give her some kind of grace because this is her birthday this is the day that her mother passed and she's dealing with a lot of emotions around that and Monet and Luna like unleashed this full-on assault on her and she literally flipped into defense mode everything from them getting evicted from their grandmother's apartment because they snitched to the housing board to this video popping up to random attacks and sending messages to gossip girl so she had a lot to deal with she was definitely processing a lot and we got to see what she was actually capable of because she did fight back she did not like just roll over and play dead but she got nasty with it and unfortunately obi was able to see like this is something that she's capable of and you could definitely see as we tracked him throughout the episode that he was not feeling it at all and child neither was i because zoya you're better than this the best thing about the episode well actually there's a few things 
we see Max, he is falling off the wagon. Not well, ain't like he was ever really on a wagon, but y'all, now he's on a big old bender. Meanwhile, old fine teacher man, I gotta get his name down because now he seems like he's worthwhile. He was giving stank a dang dank before. Like I know that he shouldn't have slept with Max, even though Max was pursuing him, but he was still giving stank a stank dank, thinking that he was better than everybody else. But now it's like, oh no, he really does care about Max. He really does care about his students. Okay, cool. It's not that bad. Now I'm gonna learn his name. But that was a really great storyline that played out in the episode. We get to see him trying to help Max, trying to save Max. But then that unravels. Like by the end of the episode, now they're gonna actually cross the line. It's like, no, why can you just hold up? Like Max is not that dang unattractive. Like yes, it's his vulnerability and his rawness in that moment. I can totally get why you're endeared to him. But you actually sleeping with him by the end of the episode, that's too much. I love watching him look for him. I love watching him trying to get Max back on the right path, taking him back home. And I am interested in seeing the storyline play out between Max and his dad and all of the tension and stuff that's happening there. We don't know if Max is actually lying about his dad blaming him for everything because that's what he says when he gets into the old fine teacher's house but child that was definitely a good strong storyline. The result of Aki and Audrey that was good even though <laughs> their little sub text back and forth her trying to make him jealous and them being weird like I know that that's a part of it but I wish that they just would have had a conversation from the beginning but I am very grateful that they have a conversation at the end and they are able to explore like sexuality wants and desires was it a mistake or was it me trying to figure it out and I love that Audrey is like even if he is bisexual even if he is gay she still wants him and she wants to figure out what that looks like and I think that that's really great because we don't see that in media but then also that's not something that's taught to us like we don't necessarily know how to make it work i know i personally don't think i would be able to make it work just because of what i have learned grown <laughs> developed experience i don't necessarily think that i would be able to date a bisexual person but it's interesting and i think really dope to see on screen how that actually plays out how those conversations come about and how people who really really love each other are able to allow each other to be their full and honest authentic selves in the space and that love is going to help them do that regardless of what might have changed in the surroundings or the periphery of their relationship so I thought that was really cool and they're young so they was handled a little bit immaturely at the beginning but Audrey comes to a realization when she's trying to make Aki jealous with a gay guy <laughs> nonetheless and then she just flats out goes and asks them the question that she needs to ask him and then he's able to be honest with her and they're able to really talk about it and that was really great to see and then the number one thing that was really great about this episode is that we get the profession from Julian that she's a bully after that whole tape gets out and they play it on a big screen at this party. Julian is freaking distraught because she didn't realize that that's what actually what the video was and that was the full version of the video and she realizes in a moment that she is a horrible bully, that she has been completely trifling and she owns it and she makes a pledge to stop bullying people and stop allowing bullying to happen in her presence. So I do think that that's very good. Like I think that that conversation was really great. Just how they got to it y'all. I was just like man I can't. Like I don't know if I can do 35 to 40 minutes of Monet and Luna just frolicking around wreaking terror on everybody in their past all because they're just little miserable little girls like do y'all have nothing else to hope for do you have no hobbies do you have no dreams do you have no talents like is this all you really think that life is because if so I pity you Ugh, I can't but the speech about bullying was really great from Julian it's good to see I think in media for a bully to stand up and take responsibility for themselves and their actions and to wholeheartedly apologize I think that she definitely does mean it and then we finally well not finally y'all because we've been seeing these reconciliations this whole time julian and zoya have like shot fires at each other and then made up shot fires at each other and then made up shot bullets at each other and then made up so they make up by the end of this episode and i'm hoping that this is it for good because i'm honestly i'm ready to get off this roller coaster i don't care this much they're fighting over shit that don't even matter and <laughs> if they have some real beef if they have some beef like surrounding their mother and their understanding of their mother and like interpersonal relationships i could get behind it but they're fighting over a position in society a position in their school that both of them don't even want like both of them don't even want to be that julian real talk sis you don't want to be this girl that you've been presenting yourself to the world as so cut it like let's stop going so hard for some sh that we really don't want the world is full of miserable people we do not need to add you two onto the mix <sighs> And then we also, y'all, get to see a little bit of the dads connecting. I'm looking forward to seeing where their storyline goes as well. This is episode four, so we have eight episodes in this season. We are in the middle of the season, smack dab in the middle, and I'm expecting for it to get a little bit deeper and to take off even more. I'm hoping that the next four episodes, like I said, we will get to see Zoya and Julian actually make amends. Maybe we'll get to see the dads actually make amends and they start to build a better unit as a family because those four could really operate as a family in New York. They need the help. Listen, 
Zoya and her dad might be getting evicted because they came in the housing committee. And it's okay if you need a little bit of help, Zoya's dad. No, no need to be prideful about that. <laughs> I can't do I can't do this video without mentioning Kate and all them little raggedy teachers because in this episode Kate hands over the reins of Gossip Girl to the other little supportive teachers and all of them are still giving insecure and still raggedy child and that's all I'm gonna say about that Kate you're really gonna put on the back burner potential opportunities for you to grow in the craft that you love for you to be able to maintain this fake infamy that you have of Gossip Girl it's giving you need a therapist and you need one stat sis because you got some things that you need to work through and Gossip Girl is becoming not only a trigger for you but also something that you're going to be codependent on and you're going to become even more stagnant in life and we hate to see it because you actually might be a good person if you can get out your own damn way again i said what i said y'all i'm going to give you a episode 5 preview video tomorrow so be on the lookout for that be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my gossip girl content or any of the other entertainment videos that i break down every single day we're posting new videos every day so be sure to hit the subscribe button and join the tribe i would love to have you here drop down and give me a comment let me know what you thought about this episode i respond to all my comments in the comment section down below so go ahead and drop yours also like the video because you made it to the end now i got my gossip girl playlist link for you right here if you missed any of my breakdowns previously or any of my other coverage and if you're looking for something new to watch i got two suggestions for some great shows for you right here get into it and i'll see you in my next video bye